investment strategy. Super Smink coming down the outskirts of the track. It's Zip Away with 100 to go. Super Smink, a lot of good men coming from the clouds. Zip Away's in front. Super Smink can't get to Zip Away. And Zip Away has won it. Welcome to Vet Doctor Behind the Curtain Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I'm a Lone Ranger up here today. Walt's uh, been to Post Malone, or he's taking uh, the missus to Post Malone for a birthday. So, happy birthday, Beck. And, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to record the show in my undies. How are you boys down in Melbourne? Uh, towards the day before summer, Scoot, and it's 16 degrees. That's how he's <laughs> down here with El Nino kicking right in. I, I know it's plenty of rain everywhere, but, yeah, summer tomorrow and a, a balmy 16 degrees today, but... Uh, we're used to it down here, and that's why you're up there and we're down here still. But, uh, yeah, Nico, some more. I suppose the tracks will be all right. They drain so well these days, but um, the metro ones anyway. But yeah, what do you reckon? How are you travelling? Uh, not too bad. We've got a, about a month till I'm uh, I'm off for a little holiday. So oh, yeah, uh, where, yeah, counting where, down the days. Where, yeah, where, where, where are we going? I'm oh, just down in Geelong, but uh, oh. that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm counting down to. So we're just trying to get through the next month and get through Christmas and the like, DK, which is all starting to ramp up now. But, yeah. Uh, I got a good meeting from Caulfield on Sunday. It's probably not going to be as impacted as the, by the rain as a few other trucks in Victoria. I was listening to the radio this morning. They think the Gippsland might flood. To yeah, they it, it might it's flood. me and a me and a one from Elgin, isn't so it? It's supposed to run on Sunday, so. And that's what's now. We've already had that soaking rain, right? And then this is dangerous when it's, this is the problem last time. We've already had the soaking rain. Ground's wet. Things are full, and now we're going to get more rain. So, yeah, for the flood areas northeast and Gippsland here. Anyway, fingers crossed for them. What do you think of uh, the the zipping classing day at uh, Caulfield over Sandown? It'd be sad. It's going to be a sad day if they ever get uh, rid of Sandown full stop as a punter. Every punter loves it, but um, the powers that be have got mixed thoughts or the non-betters don't really give a stuff about it. But uh, what do you think about this Saturday being at uh, Caulfield, Nico? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you've got a really good track out there at Sandown, but obviously Caulfield, they've obviously – seen some things in the the turnover data and those sort of things, DK, and the crowds that um, maybe swings their way. I think you could probably still have another race day out there at Soundown that had some quality about it. Like, we don't really have that at the moment. I know that they moved the Soundown Cup, um, which I think was now a lead into the Andrew Ramston from memory. Uh, so, look, they're obviously trying a few different things, but whether the sad day should just be like the MRC guineas and they should have a Soundown guineas maybe after the Australian guineas, um, maybe work a way to sort of slot it somewhere into the autumn because it probably does deserve a big day. And when we did have the big race days there, they were well received. Like when we had Blue Diamond Day there, obviously Caulfield was out of action, but even Underwood Stakes Day there, there was a really good crowd yeah. when Alligator Blood won. So punters still get around it. It's got a real punters feel out there when it when they have a big day. Yeah, and uh, I saw a few people when it was being thrown up on um, social media during the week. Uh, it might have been Ben Kalutzi, but people were saying their favourite memories of, you know, all those, and you see all those good horses who won there, you know. Uh, Anna Mo and a few others. It was ring a ding ding, and um, you know, and it was a look. We're back back in my day when I was working at the track. It was a big day, you know. It was a big day out there, and uh, one very infamous day out there. If anyone looks it up about Leone Chiara, that was uh, oh, yeah. that was one of the all time all time on a racetrack in a bookies ring that day. Um, that's a story for another day. But um, if you want to look, Google that, Google that, and Froggy knew it and all that business. But um, yeah, but uh, as you said, it's it is wagering and attendance, and but. We know with Matt Welsh and the guys in there now, Andrew, they're open to trying things, all right? If it doesn't work, they'll they'll throw it around again, you know? So um, I don't mind that. Times change, as we've seen with the bookmaking and the, the betting markets. Everything, nothing stands still. Everything changes. Try new things. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens out goes this weekend. Mm. At least we'll get a fairer track. Well, it used to be just the chance for the punters just to claw all their money back, all the good things that were sort of beaten in Cup Week. You'd just absolutely just load the cannons and destroy the, the bookies on at Sandown, wasn't it? Like That's just been forever and a day. The punters just claw back something from the wreck because it has been just diabolical for the last month for a lot of punters. Uh, lots of recreational, semi-pros, pros have been stripping out. And like Kemble last week was a swamp. Um a lot of people would have turned off the telly last week with uh, the Cranbourne meeting halfway through or as soon as rain sort of hit there. So from a turnover perspective, uh, they'd be wanting all guns blazing this weekend, I would have thought. Yeah, no, yeah, it's for sure. It's good. It's been, yeah, it's been been taken for various reasons too. It's an outdoor sport, you know. The, I think we've that wind, the wind issues at, during Flemington Carnival, the bias tracks at Caulfield, the the rain at, uh, at Cranbourne the other day. Um, yeah, it's a look, it's an outdoor sport, these various we do with it, but it just makes it harder and harder as a punter. So, um, you know, all, what is already a tough, tough, tough environment. So, yeah. It was uh, nice it was, to be a track like Sand Down. That's what we know. We know what we get, a place consistent, and uh, people like betting there. Equinox sort of stole the show a little bit last week. Uh, it was just a, a gushing of uh, media, 
attention and oh. the wind was the wind itself was just amazing. I think it ran was home it? in oh, 50, 57 for its last thousand and just sort of sat just in in behind the hole. There's a sort of half a tear away leader out in front, just a pacemaker sort of thing, and then it was sort of third or fourth and. Gosh, it was one of the softest wins I've seen for quite some time. Nico, did what did you make of it? I think DK's got some thoughts of, of looking oh, at no, it. Oh, no, well, yeah, I mean, that's not my go. Like, <laughs> you know, fawning over overseas things that are mere miles away are winning as a dollar forty chance by five links when they're supposed to win us by five links as a dollar forty chance. This one was made a good thing of it by the thing going, ah, believe it, went 20 in front, <laughs> just going like completely berserk. I'll tell you something. To me, for me, black shorts and for my own little thing, the thing that won it. Ballarat last Friday, the last race. Go and look at it. It was a far more exciting win than that thing. Plenty of ammo. Well, go and see what sort of horse it is and what it's, what it's going to win. It, it 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 was unbelievable win. Let alone the start before when it had a William swinging off it and still won. So um, go and have a look. Did you see it, Nico? Plenty of ammo. Yeah, yeah. It was a huge win. Rated massive on debut and then backed up again. I think it was thousand or fourteen hundred. So thousand or fourteen hundred. Three wide the trip and never even moved on it. Anyway, so that's me. I, look, I, I was like you, Scott. I didn't even know. I, I missed the race, turned it on. Twitter, you wouldn't think there's any other world event. Everyone says, have to say something about this thing winning <laughs> by five links, it's $1.40 chance. Everyone. And so I just turned it back off and then, yeah, good. Uh, each their own. I know people People love the sport and the narrative. Good, they enjoyed it. Good on them. <laughs> oh, anyway, Nico, you maybe give it more. I, I, I watched the race and I thought the just how the Japanese punters get around it over there, the, the stand was absolutely packed. It was like... You know, probably like watching like Winks from she was going around here. It's probably similar scenes to that. But even talking to a few people that have been over there, sort of how they run their race days. You know, the jockeys when they go out to the to the yard, they're running onto their mounts to try and you know not waste any time. It seems like a bit of a military operation. Over it is. There, well, they the lock them. They lock them up. They lock the jockeys all up and everything like that. But I remember when I worked here because I was here when when Pop Rock and. Um, Whatever the thing he could hold it with, Pop Rock and Delta Blues. Delta Blues, right? So I was working in the ring that day, and they, my, all the Japanese, whether they're students, whatever they were in, they were in Melbourne, they came to the races that day. They backed the horses, just so passionate got around them. You know, I just want to bet Pop Rock, I want to bet Pop Rock, Delta Blues. They just love it. They're just, I mean, they're brought up with it over there. It's just part of one of their national sports, horse racing, which is great. Great to see in that regard, for sure. It's on the bucket list, I think, Japanese racing. DK, we're going. I'm going to make it my mission to take <laughs> you over to Japan. You will absolutely <laughs> love the joint, and it'll blow your socks off when you get over there. The race experience, I, I guess it's it must be like Chartino. I haven't got there yet, but it's not the colour and all the party scene that you get at uh, Flemington or you know going the races at Randwick. It's pretty uh, pretty vanilla in comparison. But uh, for rusted on racing people, which we are, and just Japan itself, the hospitality, the whole lot, it's just it will blow your socks off. So oh, I didn't really have you as the the Japanese Grinch, but. Um, <laughs> I must no, admit one myself. of my favourite memories of all time was um, didn't uh, Better Loosen Up win that race? Yeah, he did. That was one of the great wins. Yeah. When he was, you know, he went over there as an Aussie horse and uh, Better Loosen Up, Karkawithis and something else. Um, yeah, so no, it was a great memory. I remember when he won there, but no, I wasn't. I just, but I just, I just, the fawning, the fawning over dollar thirty chances winning by five lengths sort of does it. Well, could have been anywhere, Scoot, but that, that does it for me. Mm. Oh, I was probably more excited, and Nico was probably tuning to Grafton Race Seven, discreet lady for Casey Adams, first win in uh, fifty starts. So, I was I was a bit like you. I got a bit, a bit more of a buzz out of that at Grafton, but I still thought it was That's a right. pretty pretty impressive win. Uh, nevertheless, you all have to start somewhere, and if you end up backing things uh, in uh, Grafton and uh, Timbuktu. Um, I guess uh, you'll enjoy any sort of racing. But um, it's an uh, interesting one uh, through the press this week. The government's basically going to uh, implement virtually zero changes from the 31 recommendations. So I think everyone was sort of worried when the, the, the win some, you lose more report uh, came out. But uh, I think they're, at the moment, just happy enough with uh, all the bet stop things. So I think we're going to be awash with advertising at the moment. And uh, there's an interesting article from uh, Mark Lamborn on, on uh, Bren O'Brien's new blog called uh, The Straight, I think it's called. So make sure you, uh, you check that one out. It looks like it's going to be an agenda-free and uh, a bias-free racing publication. Most of the, uh, the media is sort of tied up in Australia and uh, they think they're going to just uh, run their race free of uh, any other... Uh, 
influence from any of their sponsors. So good luck to uh, Bren and uh, the straight, his little project there. Uh, it will be interesting reading, and I'm sure we'll get uh, plenty of it for the show. Interesting one. I think the uh, the Jay Carr drama just won't go away. I think this is uh, a real um, racing Victoria sort of put their foot in it here. The AFL's got a three-strike policy. Um I'd probably say that it'd be worthwhile implementing the same thing at uh, RV, and I think this one doesn't really need to be publicised. They could have dealt with it in-house, and I think the jockeys and trainers should be on the three strikes policy and try and uh, get things sorted that way. What do you boys think? It's not, I mean, it's the stewards, mate. It's the it's the integrity department, their own little thing. It's got nothing to do with, you know, the head of honchos at Racing Victoria or anything. They've got no overthink. Over someone breaks a rule and they're, they're happy to... Um, Run it through the run it through the whole process, and that unfortunately, it's a public process. You know, it's not you can't just shove things under the carpet. I it's just I think it's a trivial matter, and like I says, I can't. You know, what what she's I agree with her submissions and things like that. That you know, someone's covertly recorded her in her own home doing something while she wasn't riding and out injured. Um, you know, and another one was uh, well, she was she was in the COVID the B the B Airbnb party when these stupid lockdowns were on. You know, she <laughs> broke a rule there, so big big deal there too. Like, you know, so um, I can see maybe drug use and stuff you get with strikes and things like that. But uh, but they can't. You can't just can't avoid. I know we said we we shoot ourselves in the foot. This stuff being put on the front page of the paper and things like that. But um, unfortunately, it's unavoidable, especially with a big name like her. Yeah, I think that's probably the the key with the whole story. If it's probably not her, it's probably not as big a story. I wouldn't have thought, but if that just comes with the. If it's Jay Dirtillis when he was riding, <laughs> you know, it's not. It's nothing. It's just there. But it's Jay Carr is the number one female rider in the country. Probably in the, in the world. In really. the world. And she doesn't mind getting on social media and, you know, she's got a profile and it's not like she's, you know, ducking, dodging or even like a Claire Lindrop or someone like that, you know, who's just played sort of low key. So, yeah. Do you reckon that, do you reckon that they're trying to get a bit of a run for it? But uh, any publicity is good publicity for racing, DK. Is it that no, not in that. Well, no, how do they know? I mean, they don't, they're not newspaper editors, are they? So Good story, you know, they're not The ones, they're not the... You know, some some girls. I mean, you can see the Herald Sun. Some girl just wrote an article about old Jamie Carr's history the other day for no reason apart from this thing was on. So the the editor goes, right, Scoot, go and write an article on Jamie Carr. Just just make what, just put it up for content. But click, <laughs> this one clicks. You know, so that that's 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 the issue. So it's the that's the newspaper editors. Is it right? What stories we got today? Right, go and write something on it. That'll do. So um, and it's a bit salacious with the white powder. So um. Yeah, more clicks. Anyway, maybe three strikes policy uh, could be something to work in and maybe one for the uh, the Jockeys Association. And uh, I think that'd be uh, worth trialling because, yeah, it is a complete mess in my opinion. And uh, I think they're doing more damage than uh, maybe a fine or just uh, a couple of weeks on the sideline. It could have done it a lot easier, I would have thought. Uh, this week, or the, today's show is going to be a beauty. Uh, the Syndicate, uh, we're plus 105 units. So we're on the merry-go-round a bit. We seem to uh, either bolt in, win easy, or uh, go or miss. There was one last night that I think a sniper shot at the 700 for Nico at uh, Launceston. So, yeah, we're either killing him or uh, backing sort of winners. Walt isn't here with me. Uh, there's a heavy 8 to 10. Make sure uh, you're looking for your mudlarks up in Sydney. Going to be um, very, very interesting. There's a few horses uh, on the backup for Kembla from Kembla last week that are deep into their prep. So, I'd be uh, very wary going the uh, the sticky bog into uh, a really wet deck this week. It may work for some, but it's fraught with danger. Uh, Nico, deal blast last week was uh, a bit sick, and then what a deal was scratched on the uh, the wet Wodonga track. So it was good for uh, I think it was another one uh, ended up winning there, and it was it was pretty soft in the end. So that was handy, but uh, not good for Wodonga. It was absolutely belting down there. So I've got a good story at Wodonga Scoot. Go for it. My old mate, it might have won a Brownlow medal, rings me rings me before race one. He says, oh, oh these blokes on their home track. Wodonga's a home track trainer's day. David O'Prey. I'm tuning in to David O'Prey. And remember, I said, yeah, geez, he, I remember he sets his horses for the day. And then I'm there scoring a cricket at 5.30. He rings, happy days, happy days. I said, what's happened? He said, David O'Prey's on the last leg of the quaddy, $41. He goes, I've got the second last leg, got the quaddy, got the, got the quaddy paid. 40,000. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. He, he, he trained the trifecta. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. He did. Tried the trifecta. Yeah, yeah, there he was. He, too good. Too good old mate. Old mate, uh, Brownlow medalist. Yeah, my dad used to have a couple of horses uh, with David O'Prey. He used to take a couple down to uh, Flemington. He could bob up at odds too, $15, $18. I think he's uh, had a couple of winners at Bendigo at big price as well. So sneaky, can uh, can bob up old uh, David O'Prey. Pisser of a bloke, actually. 
T Dogs is uh, back. He was all over Zip Away last week, seven dollars, and he threw out Bustlet as well. Uh, so that was another eleven dollar winner. So if you were tuning into the uh, the Ascot set, he uh, basically carried the team. It was a uh, tough day for us, but uh, T Dogs uh, got the gong, and he's uh, back in the chair this week. So we'll get him into the show soon. Uh, Jack the lad was disappointing for me. I uh, I bet up each way and just looked like an end of prep run for me. So I might chime into Sydney Super Sub for uh, Wall. I think I've found one that's short and should uh, just absolutely tear through the uh, the mud. Won't be uh, that surprising, but I think he looks absolutely super hard to beat, uh, this one. The top sort steam, a uh, couple of eye catchers last week. Go uh, back through last week's show. There's a couple of good black bookers that uh, probably didn't really handle the track, and I think there'll be a winner come from that sort of set. Top Sport, uh, I think Tristan's having a well-earned uh, break up at Noosa. He might be on the yacht. Make sure uh, you... Sign up with them. Uh, they've been uh, in the game for about 40 years. They're Australian-owned and run up here on the Gold Coast, so they're a big supporter of us with the streams. They take us on when many would run, duck, and cover. But uh, let's have a look at uh, Caulfield on Saturday and the first race here at Nico. You found an interesting one in race three at Caulfield. It's the uh, the Whispering Angel handicap over 2,400 metres. It's a benchmark 84. Cadmus is a favourite, 440. Fire Glow, two five dollars Pesto, $6.00. Ruling, seven fifty. Grand Piero, $8.00. Caboche, nine fifty. And Farago, $10.00. Maserati Bay is $12.00. And then you can get much better the rest. Ruling is the horse that uh, you like here. Carried a big weight at Banala. Yeah, this isn't a much weaker race. Uh, I think it was a benchmark 70, but comes the widest runner in the corner here. Had an apprentice jockey on first up. The the format of this race, like in, inside him's never again. Privileged son. You know, they're probably benchmark 70 horses. Laid in in the straight. He did a lot of work to get into the race. They went slow and then he really had to dash from probably the six to the 200 meter mark. He still keeps coming to the line late, but he definitely wasn't the fastest part of his race. So I think out to 2,400 meters is really going to suit him. You look at his form overseas. That was his first run in Australia. Um, he's got a, a third or fourth to Mr. Waterville on his CV. He also beat home Cleveland in one of those races. And if you go right back to his early form, I mean, absolutely bolted in a maiden one day at Curra. Uh, he ran the Queen's Vars in a Group 2 race. I've obviously got some sort of opinion on him, and he started $13 in that race with Ocean Murphy on, um, who's a bit of a go-to for these connections. So I just thought that that first up run, he'll probably improve off that, gets the apprentice jockey off for John Allen, which I think is a big tick, and out to 2,400 looks a big tick as well. So in a race where you could probably make a case for a fair few of them, Cadmus is a, is a horse well on the up and looks um, well in here getting out to 2,400 metres. I thought Maserati Bay might be another one you could have a look at if he gets his his own way out in front, back out to, to the 2,400. But I just think Ruling's got a bit more upside than a few of his rivals and really like the way he just got going late there and 2,400 looks uh, very suitable. Thoughts about uh, Fire Glow 2 on the backup, Nico? I thought it was all right last week. Yeah, he was all right. Mickey D goes aboard. Um, uh, he's he's there about in most races. I, I just don't know if he has the the upside of a few of the horses in this race. Like his last wins in a sixty four. I know he's kind of raced his way through the grades recently, but um, I think this is probably his level. Where the horses like Ruling and Cadmus, the the overseas form that they brought in here, I, I would have thought the connections would be thinking they could get to a much higher level than what they're in on Saturday, and they're they're pretty lightly raced and could keep improving. So. I'd probably have them to it ahead of him, uh, but Mickey D is absolutely flying, so it's hard to be too far against him. And it is his horse; he keeps winning on it. So, uh, yeah, I was I was a little bit against him and thought ruling it. He opened fifteens; he's into sevens now. I think at around that seven dollar, eight dollar mark looks looks a good enough price to have something small on. Cadmus probably the biggest danger, and then Maserati Bay. I'll make a winner as well. Pesto uh, is a dual nominator, so it's on the minimum, I think, up in Sydney and looks well-placed and might improve on a wet track. So still not sure which way it's going to go, but I'd prefer to back Pesto up in Sydney rather than here. And Grand Piero is one of the sickest beats I've seen. Last uh, start with Tatum Bull, 50 kilos that we backed in the syndicate, uh, Nico, but might be just a bridge too far. I think that was its big chance last, last start. Yeah, he had the real good setup going to that race. It was 2,200 back to 2,000. He dropped in the weight, carried 50 kilos. Mm -hmm. Now he goes back up in distance and back up in the weights. But he's only four and he's pretty progressive and that race did rate quite well. So he wouldn't shock at all if he's in the finish. I think it's a it's a race with a fair few chances. Uh, I just thought ruling you could you could make a case that he's probably the big improver here second up. DK, any thoughts? Um, well, I played in that race. So I backed the um, 
the, the pain horse, of course, it got beat as well. But I thought I was in trouble because I took on ruling. Ruling was fresh there. I said, oh, I thought I, said, I, had it. I thought there were two hopes. And uh, I was happy to back the pain horse. And I thought I was in trouble on the turn. I don't know, it was M uh, Al Cartwright soft down something. He looked to be trucking. And then when he went for it, he just wanted to go left, didn't it? So um, I, think I think it shows that in the sectionals. Like six of the four, he's the fastest of the race. And he's like relative to the work he was doing prior to that, he's really picked up quite fast there. And I think this how fast he had to pick up there and get into the race where it looked like oh, we probably but was, I was on privileged side as well. I was, I was the same. I thought yeah. oh, we were in a bit of danger here. Yeah. And then laid in. But he's probably just peaked on his run and that laying in's probably I think the good that. sign was the way he was travelling at the four hundred after doing that sort of work into the race. And then he uh, so then and I don't know if you mentioned, but Jay just so Jay Allen going on a horse like that, who's a strong left hand whip rider on a horse who looks like it's gonna lay in. It's another tick. But uh, I I thought it was a bit of a twenty four mile and a half race, I thought it was an even race. Um, but uh, I could see Nico's Nico's point there. I like, you know, second up up in distances is one of my wheelhouse plays. Mm. Five got five got two is getting a bit short uh, for my liking. Five dollars is uh, pretty tight there, so I'm happy to uh, side with Nico on that one with ruling. The next race we're going to have a look at is one of the features. It's the Sandown Guineas. Arkansas Kids are favourite at Top Sport. Two dollars thirty five into two thirty. Mow down four forty. Power of the Brave coming down from Sydney. Five dollars. Vivier. Six dollars. Sunset Dreaming. Sixteen. Mauricio. Sixteen. Sarasana. Twenty six. Tacumwa is twenty six dollars and. That rounds out the major chances. The first replay we're going to have a look at is Arkansas Kid. Ollie was on it this day, set it some task. Yeah, just had no chance of winning the way the track played. First and second uh, first and second on the bend, just dominated the race. Brave Mead and Run Harry Run, and he was out the back, Arkansas Kid. He jumped really well, but he elected to go back. I thought his work from the four, the 200-meter mark was exceptional. Like He just absolutely savaged the line there. And then late, he probably just peaks on his run. This is a fast run race. Um, he probably just peaks on his run here, but I thought he did a very good job to get back and hit the line as well as he did. Uh, I just look at this race and thought, if he runs 1,600 metres, I think he'll win. I think that's the only thing you're, you're questioning here because he's got a fair class edge on his rivals looking at his ratings. He ran a huge race in the Coolmore. He probably should have won the Blue Diamond. He ran great in the Slipper. Like He's just a horse of that level. I like Mark Zara going aboard. He gets a good strike rate when he gets aboard horses for the first time. Um, he's a bit of a go-to for the stable where it goes at 30% profit on turnover, 55%. So they look for him on these kind of horses. Barrier six, I think he can position much closer to the speed, up to 1,600 metres. And I'd, from the yard last start, I'd be surprised if he's over the top. Ben, JD and Will are doing a terrific job with their horses. You saw you know, all the... The racing that they gave Mr. Brightside, how he just kept running up. Like they're just getting it right, this stable. And this looks a perfect race for this horse. If it was 1400, it'd be a complete moral. I think 1600 is the only worry. I'm not stepping into 230. I think he will drift probably 250 or 260 on the day, a bit more like it. Um, and if he gets to that price uh, with a tick from the yard, I'll be betting. Nico, let's have a look at uh, Mow Down the Danger here 440 in the market it was slowly away uh, at flemington and you can see it sort of buried three back defense uh in the coal mckenna colors there uh i thought it was i thought it was a like hit the line really nicely here and suggest that uh, 1600 is what he's looking for oh he's got talent this horse but i thought he's very it's not like he's had the El Sonso run where he's had to come back and go around him. Like this was a good day to be on the rails, make ground on the fence. And like he's done a good job. And Schwartz is obviously a horse with some talent, but I still have a little bit of a question mark on that form. Like Schwartz, uh, he's all sort of spruik. He did rate okay there, but I just thought he had a few things in his favor. Like it was like he got back and had to loop around him. He's got a similar scenario on Saturday where he doesn't have a lot of early speed. In all of his races, he's been back in the field. We might have. Learned our lesson with a horse called Skybird a few weeks ago, DK. Mm. I think he's a very That's right. Amazing. Similar, mm. scenario, similar, similar scenario. He's drawn inside. There's probably going to be a, a decent tempo, you would have thought, given this race. I think, and he's probably, he's coming to the end of his first campaign. He's going to be fourth up. He's a talented horse, but I thought at $4 uh, off, a, off a run where he could have slightly overachieved something like last start, back with the, the bias in his favour. Uh, I thought he's a little bit short. I thought the big danger was probably Sunset Dreaming out of the same Oh, race. I was going to say it at, at a price, yeah. It was a huge run. First time I'd seen it in the yard, and gee, she's a great type. She just looks like one that could really jump out of the ground at 1,600. Take yeah, it. So I've, got, I've, I've, got, I've got, I fell in this Arkansas kid the other day, and then as soon as I snagged back, I thought, you idiot. <laughs> and I know why he snagged back, because it pulls. The thing pulls. If you gave it a dig and went with those things and took a spot on the buyer's track, it would have got trucking on him. 
So he comes back to get it to settle, and that means it's way off him. Right? Then I went back and looked again, and it's 1,200 metre in first up, and it pulled its head off. But all he sort of just let it tow itself up the inside and sort of kept it up asses and flashed late. So I've got, I've got, I've got, I know it's got the class edge. I've got concerns over it at 1,600 if it, you know, the, with, its, with its racing manners. But Mark's are with soft hands will help. But then where do you go? So, um, yeah, I, 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 I thought Sunset Dreaming and maybe Vivier, but it's going to be back. But Vivier will run a strong mile and had no hope in the – had a bowl around in the 1,000 guineas. Dead set bowl around out the back, just barrier troll about the back behind Skybird and that. So, um, but uh, I, yeah, I've got uh, – which means you'll probably get a better price, as Nico said, because there'll be a bit of resistance, I think, with a query at the trip. But um, I was dirty on a fall in it the other day. As soon as they went – as soon as Ollie snagged, I said, why has he snagged it? Because it's going to get pulling and he doesn't want to dig it up. So um, that, that'd be only my, my, that's my concern with that horse. Yeah, real, I'd be really interested. Done. I'm just surprised how how deep in the market uh, Vivier is because there yeah, that was the uh, just a complete on event. So it wouldn't surprise me. I think I tipped it up on the show at twenty six dollars and yeah, I was just and pretty. It's so short enough at the moment, but it'll drift because it's obviously going to be off midfield or something. You think, but mm. um, being able to get out at least and with the track, hopefully you can run on with this track with the rail out and the rain. The natural irrigation won't be anything like we saw the other day. So he might be able to wind up down the middle, you know, because that run behind Curve a lot was fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Definitely uh, one that will get uh, 1,600 metres. So, uh, yeah, if you've got a, a chink in uh, Arkansas Kid or Mow Down, there's a couple of different angles in Vivier and uh, Sunset Dreaming. But uh, safest probably way to go is Arkansas Kid if uh, M. Zara can switch him off. Nico will have the final word via his Telegram service in the Manning Yard Mail. So he does that every Wednesday and Saturday. So join for 25 bucks a week and you get uh, two meetings per week. With uh, Walt on the uh, sidelines or Post Malone or out with the uh, the misses, I'm hopefully going to steer you into uh, one of the better bets on the card at Rose Hill, and it's race number three. Tarby time is the favourite. It's the uh, Vale Ray Markey, benchmark 78 over 1,800, and Tarby time's the favourite here, $2.60. Toes on the nose, $4.00, unanimous $6.50. State of America, $9.50. Man behind the money, 11 uh, Oakfield Waratah, 12 Irish Kisses, $16. Colour Sergeant, $21. The repo we're going to have a look at here is Tavi Time. He was super, I thought. Uh, the Chris Lees, he's in the uh, the blue with the pink and white sleeves, and he just makes a meal of them here. Primito's uh, no slouch. He, he was carrying uh, 61 kilos that day, and he was sort of wobbling all over the place, Primito. But uh, Tavi Time just makes these look absolutely second rate and he just charges away from his rivals here. I thought the step up to 1800 is perfect. He's uh, he's pretty adept at uh, lots of different tracks, so I don't think Rose Hill's going to be any problem for him, and he's bred to eat mud. He's by Tavistock out, and I think he's got um, some Success Express uh, dam lines back through his breeding, so both sides of his family, he's going to just absolutely eat mud. And uh, Toes on the Nose ran on the same day in worse time. So he went, uh, they went three leaks quicker in the Tabby Time race. Uh, Unanimous is on the back up from Kembla, which I think is a bit of a negative. Man behind the money is up in the weights and first up. So first up on the uh, the bog track, uh, over 1,800 metres against this sort of progressive horse that just runs through his grades is scary. I thought Irish Kisses is absolutely flying, but uh, – Again, runs into uh, a horse with the class of Tavi Time. Tavi Time on debut was a pretty big run on uh, a heavy track. I was surprised they sort of ran it that day, but uh, he absolutely rattled home. So that, to me, suggests that he'll uh, absolutely eat it. So $2.60, I think uh, he's going to be in many, many multis, and bookies will want this horse uh, beaten. And uh, Dylan Gibbons just needs to keep him out of trouble, and uh, hopefully it's not fence on fire with uh, Rose Hill underwater. But uh, I think it won't really matter for this horse. He just needs clear air, and uh, he should be too good for them. Uh, any thoughts on any of those runners, uh, Nico? Nah, nah, probably not. A, not a race I'm fully across a BM78. But I did watch Tabby Time last start because he, there was a bit of a spruik on him, and yeah, just the way he sort of kicked in that last hundred meters was, was a win of a pretty good horse. And just lo looking at him from a, a type point of view, is pretty um, similar to a few of the Tavistocks, they're lightly framed sort of horses, and they usually get through the wet. So. Probably no concerns there. I think my notes will just keep backing him. They'll just keep roaring through the gates and just keep putting him up in distance. So, yeah, I think you, you'll you get 2,000 metres and he might even get uh, 2,400 metres in time. So definitely uh, 1,800 is going to be no dramas for him on a, uh, a bog track now sort of peaking in his uh, preparation. 
Uh, punningform.com.au is uh, the form guide that I use, DK loves, and so does Nico, and you can just flip-flop between uh, any jurisdiction. So Grafton on Sunday, uh, there I was at Gawler yesterday uh, with one in uh, in a maiden race, and here I am doing Rose Hill Race 3. So uh, make sure you check out punningform.com.au. It's the next level of form that you need. So the, uh, the free sites are good, but uh, learning about the benchmarks and all the data, and uh, especially when you're starting to do videos and uh, manage your database, uh, it's a game changer, and it's been uh, a blessing for me, that's for sure. Uh, so make sure you check out punningform.com.au. Trav Noonan will now join us for uh, Ascot, and a uh, bit of a head wobble, really. Yeah. Straight off the bench, seven dollar winner, and throws out uh, the eleven dollar bustler. Uh, he's probably a little bit lucky that tricks of the trade sort of got held up along the fence, but uh, can't knock him. Two from two, well done, mate. Yeah, thanks. It was good to get on the end of a couple of results after a tough, tough carnival. So yeah, it was a good start to the pinnacles there in Ascot, and uh, rolls on this week with a, another big meeting with the winner bottom stakes. Outstanding. It's. Uh... Least Year Classics, a, uh, a big feeder race uh, for the railway, uh, historically. And uh, you think you found one here in uh, Storm Chaser? A little trap for young players there. There's two races called the Listeer in uh, WA. One is, as you said, the lead into the railway run about three weeks ago. And this one's for the three-year-olds so over 1,400 metres. So uh, this features a few horses that come out of the WA Guineas and also the WA Champion Phillies. Um, but pretty keen here on, on a horse who doesn't come out of any of those sort of form lines. He's a little bit off Broadway, uh, coming through some left field sort of races. Bunbury. Yeah. Let's have a look at the replay now. No markets up yet from uh, top sport, but let's have a look at him in the blue. Yeah. So this is him back along the inside and the light blue and sort of uh purple hat. Uh, leader here is a dead set thousand meter horse. He's very quick and sort of let's rip. Uh, and he makes really good ground up here, Storm Chaser, to run him down. I love the way he sort of finishes off here this last 200 metres. He's got a real turn of foot, this horse, and a big will to win. Uh, he looks beaten at the top of the straight, still looks beaten here, but reels him in that last 50. Uh, it's a really good effort to get over the line. Uh, he's got a super turn of foot. His work there, six to the 400, was um, outstanding relative to the day. And he put on a, a really good performance before going for a break when winning at 1,200 metres um, against his sort of own age, and that was first up against the older horses. He goes 1,000 metres to 1,400, but you see this a lot more often in a jurisdiction like uh, Western Australia than sort of Victoria and New South Wales. I wouldn't treat it as the same negative as you would in those states because it, uh, just the calendar doesn't quite work as well for some uh, trainers in Western Australia, and they get them very fit. Uh, in their deep sand training bases, a lot of these stables train in their own sort of private properties with the deep sand. So, yeah, as I said, it's not the same negative it would be, say, in New South Wales or Victoria, having run the stats. Uh, and this is a horse who definitely looks like he wants 1,400 metres. You know, I've got a fair knock on a few horses in the race in front of him. I think in the market, um, Augment coming out of the Placid Arc got run down by Rip Cord. They really went slowly that last 1,200 metres and Ripcord looked like he was shot out of the cannon, but it was more everything in front of him was stopping. I think she'll have a real question mark at the end of 1,400. Investment strategy backs up out of the WA Guineas where he was really good behind zip away. Um, he'll be in the finish, but I, I just think a horse like Storm Chaser on the way up set for this race rather than an afterthought really appeals. And you get W Pike, um, who's a great rider in this sort of situation where he can just make use of the barrier, hopefully being the first four or five, and then just let the horse do his do his work and uh, sort of pop off the fence and let him build at the top of the straight. Like, nice run in at Ascot should really suit that horse. Mm. I have got no – I'm probably more inclined to back a horse 1,000 metres to 1,400 than 1,000 to 1,100 or 1,200. I'd be interested to hear your DK thoughts on this one. Um, yeah, well, it depends what it's done in the past, Scoot. So if it's a, it's having a second start, I'd, you know, I'd probably prefer to see it myself. But you – you're, um, yeah, it'd be a whole case by case scenario in that, but you're right. You're right. I'd rather at a uh, thousand to 14 than a thousand to 12. That, that'd be my preference uh, for a short answer. Mm. You actually see it in Hong Kong a little bit as well. A lot of uh, horses will run well over a thousand and then just uh, zip back up to 1400 and then sort of vice versa. I know they sort of play with their ratings a little bit and try and uh, give them quiet runs to get them up and down the scale, but uh, it's 
definitely something worth uh, putting in the back of your mind, watching uh, horses that run well at 1,000. You can sort of give them a chance because they sort of go a little bit slower in a 1,400-meter race and they've still got sort of that dash in their legs to sort of run home. So maybe uh, one, a little pearl to keep uh, up your sleeve for later. Race nine is the winter bottom and uh, looks like a, it's an interesting one. I thought uh, it might come up a little bit stronger here, but uh, overpass is uh, flying the flag here for the Eastern Raiders. Uh, T Dogs, and uh, we're going to have a look at uh, its Quokka uh, start and uh, tell us why you like it here. Yeah, well, he's the best horse in the race, that's clear, and I think you, you're spot on. It's come up a bit weak this winter bottom for a Group 1 race. There's only one horse in it I'd consider a Group 1 sprinter, and that's him. He was able to lead throughout here, getting pressure from S4 and Red Care Man, Amelia's Jewel, and Valerie Patina sort of get off his back late and launch at him, but he, he's able to stick his head out and win. And just look at the way he just keeps fighting this last 100 metres. I thought it was a terrific win. Uh, and this is at the course and distance, 1,200 metres Ascot. This is only, you know, he's six months later. He's had a couple of runs since then. He ran second in the Doom and 10,000 to gear kick uh, through the winter and was terrific on that occasion. And he's come back and had the lead-up run heading towards the Everest where it was really good uh, and then didn't fire really in the Everest, not at his best on that occasion, but just looking through his overall career profile, just, you know, even he's just his last 10 starts, he would need to produce only, you know, he's sort of below average performance to win it. I, I think he doesn't need to go to his absolute best because there's just no depth to this race. Uh, I think if he runs up to the first up run, he'll just be winning. Uh, it's as simple as that. $3 is a very appealing price. You get a great traveler of horses and beyond Baker, Josh Parr. He'll come across from Barrow 11. Hopefully the three-year-old Oscar's fortune, who's a dead set thousand meter horse, he'll be struggling to, to run the end of the 1200, takes him into the race. Uh, and he can sort of take over at the top of the straight over pass. And I think the rest of them are going to have a really tough job trying to run him down. Uh, the, the horse that half interests me was triple missile being set for the race. He's got a big turn of foot. Ollie's going to have to cut the corner uh, from barrier one in one of his final group one rides but he's a bit of a low percentage horse and i thought he was a little bit disappointing last start at flemington and then you look through the rest of the field and it's proper group three sort of form like if horses like hot zed uh red can man they'd be going around 300 500 to one in the everest while overpass was starting 13 dollars. like it's just they're no comparison to him class wise uh, this is a horse that's been, well, I'm sorry, this race has been dominated by the Eastern State Raiders when they've come over here with a, a proper Group 1 horse, and he just ticks that box, and he's already won at Ascot. He's already been there and performed. I, I think you could price him super aggressive and get him sort of even money. I think three, they're shopping, yeah, like $293. Uh, it's a crazy price in my opinion. I think he should be much, much shorter. Yeah, the top sport market's just gone up. So uh, overpass is two seventy. Uh, triple missile is five fifty. Ripcord's been the mover nine into six fifty with the big flashing uh, light run that we uh, spoke about last week, and then Oscar's fortune seven dollars fifty. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I could uh, come into triple missile as a as a legitimate danger, especially on the map. They're buried probably what three or four pairs back the fence uh, on on the way that uh, Ascot plays. Any uh, any thoughts, there, Nico? Yeah, Ripcord was a really interesting runner last start, like to, that absolutely sizzling last 200 metres. Interestingly enough, it was a quite a fast run race looking at the data he came through. Um, on punting form, they got it going seven and a half lengths above to the 600. Given how well he finished off, I would have thought they would have gone slow, but um, that's probably a tick for him given he's going to find a fast run race here. It's just whether that's good enough form. What do, what do you think, t Dogs? Is that good enough form to be stacking up here? No, I think the market's trying to find something. So, you know, you, you need something to take up percentage behind overpass and they've pushed everyone into the three-year-olds. But just looking at their ratings, uh, him and Oscar's fortune, they're, they're a good five, six lengths off overpass at his best. So they need a fair bit to uh, sort of come up and, and reach his level. That's, you know, if overpass turns up at his absolute best. Uh, but I will... Wouldn't be going into this race thinking he's not going to be, you know, somewhere near his best. They were obviously very happy with how he came through the Everest to travel him, and he's already been there before. So, 
Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I think he's just an absolute monster. I think uh, it'd be you'd only really be concerned with overpass if there's a, a big drift on the day. If he sort of got to five dollars, you'd be starting to uh, saw your pants. But uh, I think this horse, if it starts sort of south of three dollars, I think it uh, all signs lead to his travel well. Um, if he doesn't go to peace in the yard um, and everything's ticking over nicely, I can see him getting backed into sort of two dollars fifty if the big boys sort of chime in two twenty or something like that. Uh, without a doubt, and Josh Parr's just the perfect rider uh, under these sort of circumstances. So, yeah, I think uh, you found the right one, and I think, yeah, I probably agree with what you say in terms of the market just looking for, I guess, a different form line and they're just the X factor, and, and maybe it is uh, Ripcord who looks, uh, yeah, still on the way up, but uh, that would be uh, the best way to play it there. Uh, anything else on the the card or around the grounds uh, tickle your fancy? What about Equinox last week? Uh, but he thinks it's overrated, don't you, tea dogs? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> best horse in the world, DK. Uh, by far, I would have thought. But no, it was good. I don't think we get to see him again. So um, that's a little disappointing. Would have liked to have seen him race on. They've got a bit of a habit at the moment, the Japanese star gallopers of running them once every six months and then they they sort of have seven or eight runs and that's it, rushed off to the barn. So um, sort of a little stat too, the, the amount of uh, great Australian mares who are over there at the moment getting covered by Japanese stallions is incredible. So I think I counted about uh, a tweet from the Hawk, about 15 Group 1 winning mares uh, in Japan at the moment that were Australian bred horses. So that's where all our good mares are going. No, well, they're just letting the team down. Everyone sort of poo-poos and says that we can't breed, breed all these stayers and next thing you know, what, Liberty Island's out at Yankee Rose. So that's another urban myth debunked, I would have thought. Yeah, exactly. I think the the stats around Group 1 winning mares producing good horses is actually a lot better than people sort of make credit for. I think we just always remember the Black Caviars and Maccabi Davis that haven't necessarily produced anything good, but the majority of Group 1 winning mares do throw good horses. Uh, you were talking about uh, any other races around the grounds on Ascot that tickled the fancy. Race one uh, is a very interesting race uh, leading towards the Perth Cup. I talked about last week, I just don't think there's much happening around the Perth Cup this year that a few of the horses that are probably going to be at the top of the market when the futures open maybe next week. Uh, I just don't think it's setting the world on fire, the exposed gallopers. And there's a horse here that I'm very interested in, Diamond Scene. Uh, for Donna Reardon, who used to be uh, sort of the runner of Lindsay Smith's um, WA operation. She's got a lot of horses for Bob Peters now. Uh, and Willie Pike is taking the ride on this horse. He's very similar to a horse who started favourite and won a Perth Cup a few years ago, Midnight Blue. Just a big, strong galloper who's making his way through the grades. I wouldn't be shocked at all if this horse starts favourite in a Perth Cup in, say, a month's time. I think you can get our money out of him in race one uh, as he goes through the grades. Outstanding. So that's Ascot race one, number three, Diamond Scene. So around sort of the two eighty, uh, two dollar ninety mark. All right. Fingers crossed. It's uh, another fill up. We've got uh, race seven. You got Storm Chase around the five dollar quote. Uh, overpass in the winter bottom, and as we said, uh, Pike in the first. So could be uh, a big day over in uh, Perth again. So uh, if you're in a hole, uh, hopefully uh, T Dogs uh, digs you out like he did last week. All right, thanks, mate. We uh, we might catch you next week. No worries. Thanks, Goody. Outstanding. All right, it's time for uh, Donnie's Best. We're back up at Doombin. G'day, gents. Best bet this weekend comes up in Doombin in the lucky last race 10 with horse number eight, National Choice. Love the way he did the line when he got out from a tricky spot behind the leader last start at the sunny coast. It looks a stack of speed on paper here, so that might take out number 30 in the face. It looks one of the better performed horses, so happy to take it on with all the early predicted speed. National Choice should sit in the third pair, fourth pair, um, and enjoy this the hectic early tempo. It loves a wet track. It's flying for Heathcote. He keeps the horses up when they're in work, so I've got no problem about being fourth up back to 13.50. It looks a nice bet around the $4 mark, so happy to make that the best bet. The other bet comes up on Kensington on Friday in race one, Miss Emma. It's a bit of a barrier row. It can kind of stumble and rear at the start. If it jumps cleanly, it should win this race. There's not much else in it. And, yeah, it should be too strong. So the best bet of the day is uh, Race 10, Doomman, National Choice, and Race 1, Friday, Kenzo, Miss Emma. Good luck. 
All right, that's uh, Doom and Race 10, number eight, National Choice. That's an interesting one. I thought uh, M-Rod gave it an absolute peach, so hopefully it's got a little bit of improvement left in it. I haven't got to that race, but uh, I trust what Donnie's saying there. And then uh, Kensington Friday was way too good and way too early for me. Uh, race one, number seven, Miss Emma. So Donnie's uh, two plays there. Uh, top two special, haven't got to it yet, but uh, might throw Tavi time in and we might put one of Nico's or uh, one of Trav's in. And uh, we'll offer up a uh, top two special at Top Sport. Uh, Jimmy's a star was an absolute beauty uh, for DK last week. Once we got the scratching of uh, what a deal, we uh, we put Lyrical Gangster with Jimmy's a star. So typical, uh, found the sludge Lyrical Gangster and uh, just could not uh, get mustering on that uh, sticky Kembla track. Felt like we were uh, betting at the ball last week at uh, Kembla. It was uh, that torturous. But, uh, yeah, speaking of drainage, they need to uh, fix some uh, drainage up at uh, Kemba, I would have thought. Hopefully uh, Mitch Beer gets them on to uh, sorting the track out up there. Top Sports team, again, uh, unlucky last week, but uh, let's have a look at uh, what they've backed this week. Caulfield, race 10 is the first one. Uh, race 10, number 13, Prowling. This could be one of our uh, syndicate subs here. Uh, Greg Urell. This could be your bet, Scoot. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Um, Real, uh, who did uh, it was it's absolutely uh, scorcher line uh, first up I thought in the race with uh, Curran and a couple of others, and I think he's in for a really good prep this horse. Did you get to race ten, Nico? We haven't spoke about this. Yeah, I, I had a brief look at it and thought Gennady's probably the horse to beat. And um, if you don't have a huge opinion of her coming through the mare's form, while well, it's, it's pretty wide open, probably lends itself to a, a horse like Prowling or maybe one of those other ones down the bottom of the weights really improving in a in a race that probably lacks. A bit of class, given the the usual class of horse that runs in a Doveton. I thought the race f- fell away. I l- sort of looked at the norms earlier in the week, and I thought the biggest danger or the horses hard of the market. They just haven't paid up and gone to the race. So, I thought twelve dollars and thirteen dollars bet prowling was was pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts sort of eight dollars and uh, just needs a good B McDougal ride from a wide draw to go super close there at a big price. Uh, the next one here is Doom and race six number eleven, and it's with. Without revenge, two hundred fifty dollars at twenty one dollars here. This horse is coming via Sydney, and I think it's had a stable change. So, not sure who had it previously, but uh, it's I think it's coming from one of the big dancers or the little dance. So, interesting bet there. And the next one is Doom and Race Nine, number three, and this is Knight's Choice, five hundred at four dollars. So this horse was a dual nominator. And they've ended up going for the 2,000 meter race instead of the uh, the mile, the 1,600 meter race. So that's that's definitely racing in uh, number nine instead of race six. And I think Donnie was telling me this horse they knocked back two million dollars for it, um, and it was a super run uh, last start over a mile. Only got really hot late in the Malulabar Cup, so I haven't got uh, to that race yet. But um, hmm. interesting to see how it goes. I did want to uh, be winning a. Um, a 2,000 metre race uh, at uh, Doom, and if they've knocked back two million for it, though, I think it's one of Walt's horses as well. Yeah, well, they they ran it in the Golden Eagle, so they've obviously got a, a fair opinion of him. And he's win. I think it was in the Sunshine Coast Guineas. Was like looked like he was going to be a Group One horse, and he probably just hasn't really gone on with it. Um, visually, that was. I don't think it rated that well, but. That he just has a bit of style about. It. I'm not surprised. Maybe Hong Kong came knocking, but I think now, yeah, now with the more the like all Peter Putin's pop up races and everything like that, <laughs> you know, you see like detonator Jack, you can win a million dollar race, you know, and and get so, you know, get get something back. So they can say we can win a pop up and get a million dollars, you know. So um, if you, they thought he had that talent. It's just crazy what they're doing, like stretching horse at the moment. I suppose sort of spoke to Walt th- during the week. I, I nearly fell over when uh, Kira Ma said that they're going to back him up for the Ballarat Cup. Detonator Jack. They don't. So they he's don't, had sort of. They don't spell them. My used to just, they just race them. Keep racing. That's them. It's, it's like three or four grand finals, and then I well, heard, heard some. That's that's the owners too, though, isn't it? That's their black shirt. That's down, down hometown and all that. All the all the people who are in that horse would be from probably Ballarat of that area. That'd probably be wise, good. Yeah, oh, it's just yeah, it is incredible. And there's talk that uh, Osipenko is going to go to the Villiers. Everyone's just trying to run these horses. Oh, I suppose if you've got a horse up and going, you just keep running it until you. Your, num- your marble falls falls into the, the slot of first because the prize one is just, it's just crazy. It's unbelievable. DK, what have you got for us uh, this week? You got a, another little Jimmy as a star? Or well, going back to the one roll? that got scratched two weeks ago, Scooty, um, ain't no deal done, who's one of mine, he got scratched, which probably might have been a blessing in disguise on that 
rail true, savage, biased track. Um, let's roll the dice. Ended up beating Dunkel in a four horse field or whatever it was in the end once he scratched. Um, so he's in tomorrow, uh, Saturday, on a, you know, with the, I think better suited with the rail out with a natural irrigation. And he's had the deluxe jump out in between runs, which I just love. You know, I just love. He just, it says he ran sixth. I was like, how's he run sixth? I was looked at it. I had to watch it twice. And he ran sixth in the jump out. He was sixth when he hit the line. And then he's just steaming at him when they're sort of coming up to through the winning post here at Flemington. So, um, yeah, I'll stick with him as the, he's, he, is the, uh, he's been a good horse to me. So um, I think he can win against Scooty. Eight, no deal done. Five, three, I think it is, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, race five, number three, yeah, Nico, being in three dollars. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, yeah, Nico, that's an interesting one for you. Yeah, I think you, I'm pretty sure he had a hoof abscess in between runs, which he's had the jump out since that happened. So you'd think off the jump out, you'd think he's all sweet. It's just... The the race shape is very interesting there because you got Keats and a few other horses like going forward. Mm. And just folks got Zara on so that second last start. How do they ride him? I would have thought ain't no deal done. Probably tries to get the back of just folk being drawn outside him. But how far forward does that take him, or do they take a bit more of a sit with just folk? That was the only thing. off better. Uh, I think as well. We get, we got to get a decent price on him. You know, Gate seven. He's got a got a little. You know, a few things to work out there. Yeah, well, but like he went up two thirty, which was like, all right, like fair enough. And now he's out to three twenty or something. 30, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so there's going to there could be with the. I think that's the draw. But I mean, just folks on the back up from last week. Keats again missed his missed his Kilmore Cup, so he's here because the Kilmore Cup got called off up. You know, so um, yeah, there was a few smart judges last last start saying it was the the bet of the year. Uh, so obviously he's. His rate, his ratings, and all that. Uh, he's just gone to a new level. I thought they would have aimed up a little higher, maybe mm. o- over the end of Cup week. But oh, he's been. I, I remember I backed him in the Derby, and he was favourite for that Derby that year, and he, they just didn't get there. But they've done the right thing by the horse, and he might start to repay him because if he can win on Saturday and keep progressing through, like he could be an Australian Cup horse mm. next autumn. So I uh, give him strength. Ain't no deal done. Three dollars sounds like he's uh, almost across the line. I love the confidence, boys. All right, I think uh, that's a wrap from us. Uh, we've survived a Walt-free show. Cruised. Cruised through hey? it. Cruised through it. No, only your little thing on the North Korean racing, and that was it. It was lovely. Was so it? I think it was Post Malone on the last. I think he's on here today, Post Malone. He, he's down here today or tomorrow, so I uh, must have been You'd be going? Uh, no, Rot? No. Eh? No, <laughs> no, not my <laughs> go, Post Malone. <laughs> Sarah's a good concert. I saw a write-up on it. It's been sensational. He's put it, does a sensational show, so must have been last night. He was up there, was he? Was that your go, Nico? Take the missus to Post Malone? Post Malone, uh, yeah. nah, not quite. Not quite Post Malone. He's got a few good songs, but... Uh, it's go, going nuts down here for concerts. They've done this, whatever, there's always live 20 concerts in 20 days or something. Like Christine Aguilera yeah. the other day, Robbie Williams, now Post Malone. It's going, it's going crazy. Outstanding. I'll be more focused on the uh, the Jericho on Sunday, I reckon. Our be, deputy. That'll be where we're honed in. Yeah, well, he's... Chance? Third time in the race. Um, no... 4,600 is a question mark, but off his last <laughs> run, you'd say he's nearly in career best form. That run at Mooney Valley was Would, outstanding. So. I mean, I only looked at the thing, but I saw Guido win the same night. Who, who, I, uh, he was stepping from 2,000 to 3,800, wasn't he, when he won there, mm. Guido? Wouldn't he? Have you ever quit? Would he be hard to beat? Off the top yeah, of I would have thought Guido would probably be favourite yeah. in in the market. And Gee, yeah, he was a big win. Well, we, we thought, well, we found our rider, Ross O'Sullivan, gave Dar Deputy an absolute peach, and then he comes out the race he's after Mills and Guido. So he's <laughs> stuck to Guido. Stick with him. So, uh, who'd, who'd you end up with? We got Ed Keating. I don't know. It's a bit of a raffle. You just get oh. whatever rider you get, I think, okay. for the race like the Jericho. There's just not many of them around, but uh, I'm not sure. He's drawn 15. It's, it's the leader's gate, isn't it? Out there, out wide. So maybe he does just press forward and see how far he can get. But we're uh, we're pretty we're hopeful. <sighs> Joints on fire. Another winner with unfair dismissal. Win did win the other day too, didn't Ararat or somewhere was it? Yeah, Jess Booth. Yeah, straight to the front, and then uh, the one I thought. Well, we we scratched unfair dismissal two weeks ago from Sound. I thinking, oh, this is Lotter Rock's race. Got Willow on straight to the oh, lead yeah. on the on the leader's track, and it didn't give a yelp. So we were uh, we we're on top of the world leading to that, and then. Back, back down to earth last Wednesday and then back on top of the world <laughs> on Monday. So that's a great game, isn't it? It's just it's up and down, up and down. Typical. So typical. Are you going down? Are you going down for the Jericho? Are you going to be there? Oh, uh, Not sure yet. Uh, maybe th- there is a bit of talk that we might have a few runners on the day, so maybe if we've got a few, but if it's just a deputy, not sure. Hmm, not that confident. Okay. Yeah, well, best of luck that's with that's it anyway. The day he's got to spend with the bride. So whether she wants a road trip to the bull, Nico. Well, she came out to see Andy on the other day. I was like, we're going to get a winner. Like, it'll oh, be a good it's day. Lot of rock. It's run last. <laughs> it's run last. <laughs> Never again. So yeah. could be put the, the mo- Put the moz on it. 
Outstanding. All right, great show. Uh, big thanks, uh, boys. I know it's getting uh, long in the year and everyone's starting to uh, come to the end of their preps, but uh, hopefully we found you guys a couple of winners. Hopefully they just start running a little bit straighter for the punters at home. Very, very big uh, weather watch at Rose Hill and just around the grounds. Uh, try not to bet too early unless you think one's the complete wrong price and uh, just those track ratings, make sure uh, you just be a yeah, fine tooth comb and make sure your horse is going to get through the ground or uh, go well on that certain track rating because, yeah, it's been trickier than ever and uh, it is a marathon and not a sprint. So we'll see you next week and a big thanks to all our sponsors as well. See you guys.